Hey, YouTubers. Okay, um, some of you, some of you may be wondering, why don't I just show a self-runner running itself? And that would be, uh, like, the solid proof we need for over-unity. Right? Right, well, if I did that, then would you really be learning anything, you know? I think it's important to uh, to show the steps towards um, over unity, um, extra energy, and how to do that. And I think I think that's very important to learn. I mean, you know, you don't really learn anything if you just are handed over uh, the final result. But um, anyways, that being said. Uh, I decided this time to uh, use two capacitors that are exactly the same on the input and output. And uh, how the Lenz's Law drag uh, relates to that. And this still, I, you know, I put an equal size capacitor on there thinking there would be like some major drag because, because of how big the capacitor is. But there's not. It's, it's only a slight amount. And really, this is a matter of uh, just balancing everything together to it, where it works in harmony. Uh, when everything's matched up to one another. Uh, uh, so I'm using a, a capacitor like this. Um, I don't know if this is going to focus in or not. Um, no, it doesn't look like it is. But this is a uh, 10,000, let's go over here, maybe this light will help this out, I guess not, I can't, there are 10,000, there we go, 10,000 microfarad 50 volt capacitor is what we're going to be using uh, on the input and the output. So it's exactly the same, okay? Um, and we can see how the rotor reacts to that. So I'll turn these meters on. This meter is going to be reading the voltage. Uh, you look here, the voltage of our first capacitor. We're going to do what we did last time. We're going to run it up from our battery. Uh, and our capacitor connected together. Uh, so this is the negative. All I got to do is connect it there to connect both the battery and the capacitor together. And the positive, uh, of course, is on the positive. So they're just in parallel. Uh, so there's nothing in it because uh, I don't have it connected to the battery yet. So that's reading the capacitor, the first capacitor. Uh, this one is going to be reading the output capacitor, and I have that shorted. It should be on zero. don't know exactly why, but I got it shorted out right there. I guess that's on zero now. Uh, I have the... Uh, this is everything combined together. The collapsing magnetic field from the motor coil rectified and this is the uh, uh, the generated power being shorted together they're combined together right here so I'm going to take this off okay so here's the steps that's going to happen I'm going to connect the battery to the capacitor together they're both together in combination are going to be running this and then I'm just going to Disconnect the battery. Uh, so it's running off this. And uh, running off that. And charging this. Which is on zero. So there's so nothing basically in both of them. So let's uh, start this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the short off. So I don't have to worry about it. And uh, it's going to climb a little bit. A little rebound effect there. And uh, so we're going to connect this, run it up, and then uh, disconnect it. And right after we disconnect that, we're going to connect all our output power 
and we're going to compare. So here we go. Get a little spin up on it here. Okay. Run it. Okay, there it goes. Hopefully nothing flies off. I, I think I gotta redo the the tape on there. And here's the voltage uh, it's getting from the battery. And, uh, there's nothing in that. That's a little bit. I'll restore it. Keep that on zero. Well, doesn't want to stay on zero. But uh, but I got the AC switch connected there. Right there. It's getting up the speed. I'll take that off. Uh, there it goes. Okay, we got about 11.97 volts. And nothing really going on there yet. Let's get this up to a nice, nice good speed. A nice resonance. Just what it looks like it's going into there. Uh, so we got about 11.98. So we'll just say 11.97. So I'm going to disconnect and then I'm going to reconnect this right here. There we go. And look at this. We already got past the voltage that we started out with. And now watch the rotor. Yes, there's a little bit of lenses drag on it from the opposing fields. But it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Um, so we've got uh, down to 3.5 volts left. And we've already got up to 36 volts here. So obviously we've got more joules stored at a higher voltage than the second capacitor and it's still going it's still going uh, here's the speed um, yeah, I mean you're not gonna get like exact results as far as RPMs but you can see I mean what the same size capacitor does here we got 70 it's still climbing it's almost at its max of the voltage of this capacitor, which is about 50 volts. We got 40 volts. Look at that. We haven't even got down to zero yet. So we're going to let this uh, get up as high as possible, and then I'm going to stop it there. And we're going to calculate how much energy we got out compared to how much energy we put into it it's still climbing so I'm gonna probably set this down and uh, press hold yeah maybe I could do it with one hand here and that might start dropping if it does then yeah press hold there press hold there and that's where we ended up with so we started out with like 12 volts right here, or almost 12 volts, uh, and got 40 volts. So this is holding lots of energy right here, and we didn't get too much of a drag on there. And like I said, this is all about balance. Really, you probably want like a, a smaller capacitor right there, um, because if it's, you know, if it's if it's too big, it's, you're going to see like some good drag on the rotor, which is what we're trying to stay away from. So you want a capacitor that's going to be like not too small, but not too big. You want a happy medium right there. And uh, still, let me see, I just had this disconnected the whole time. And I had the uh, output uh, power coming from the motor and the generator being shorted uh, and this is where we ended up with 1.165 volts 
and 40.23 volts going into uh, from and into uh, two capacitors that were this size uh, 10,000 microfarad capacitor 50 volts these can hold quite a bit of power so on to the next clip to show uh, we're, we're going to calculate this right now okay here's our capacitor charge energy calculator and uh, I'll provide a link in the description box down below so you can do this too uh, this is very easy to use you just uh, put your volts in right here and your farads in uh, right here so we have the set on microfarads you can use any of these but we're using microfarads oh, microfarads okay so uh, the energy that we started out with was 11.97 volts at 10,000 microfarads so we started out with 716.405 millijoules and the millijoules is right here in that M that's milli joules so what we'll do is we'll copy that <coughs> bring up our old calculator here and we will paste that in okay so now we ended up dropping this voltage down from 11.97 to 1.165 volts at 10,000 microfarads <coughs> so we ended up with the energy in that capacitor at 6.786 millijoules so what we're going to do is we're going to copy that we're going to go to our capacitor or uh, calculator and we subtract what we ended up with there and we get 709 millijoules that's the energy we actually used up was this 709 0.619 so 709.619 okay and I had to put the decimal here because this is a millijoule if it was one full joule uh, this zero is a whole number if this was one then it would be 1.7 joules or it would be like uh, like 1000 I guess 709 joules but that's not what it is it's just a fraction of a joule so this is 709 millijoules so we're gonna copy that okay now in our second capacitor oh, the one that collected all the energy we ended up with 40.23 volts at 10,000 microfarads and we see we it actually ended up with eight whole volt uh, joules 8.092 joules so if we get our calculator we stored our input already and we take our output of 8.092 and then we divide that by our energy that we used up we end up with a cop of 11.40 but if you multiply that by 100% uh, to find the difference in efficiency there look at that 1140% um, energy efficiency because we are looking at energy stored in capacitors so it's 1140% 1, 